everyone and welcome back to my channel. It has been a hot minute since I filmed a video for my channel. Uh, I've had some technical difficulties for the last two videos I tried to film and also I got busy with stuff in life again. So apologies for the sporadic videos here and there. Um, I always say I'm gonna be a little bit more consistent and then something happens but anyways I'm back for now. And today I have, I think it's six finished objects to share along with two half finished objects and technically three works in progress. So let's just get into it. So the first thing I want to share is what I'm wearing. This is actually a finished object from last year. Uh, this is my Acacia cardigan and this is by Irene Lynn. And this was what I knit for the Irene Lynn knit along that Faith and I were hosting last year. I think it ended at the beginning of January. And I technically finished the knitting on this before the end of the knit along, but I didn't block it or put buttons on it until I think a week ago or two weeks ago. I mean, I guess it was two weeks ago at this point, but, um, oh yeah, the yarn I used, I picked up from Fibers West last year and it was Kensington Prairie Farm. And it's their, oh, it's going to focus. Nope, maybe not. Uh, it's alpaca yarn and it's 100% baby alpaca. And I think the reason why I waited so long to block this was because I was afraid it was going to grow like exponentially because it is 100% alpaca. So what I did was when I blocked it, I, I just dumped it in the water for less than like 20 seconds just enough to saturate, not even like fully saturate it. Um, and then I took it out of the water, rolled it up in a towel and stepped on it, you know, the, the usual. <laughs> and then uh, I laid it flat to dry and I, I made sure not to stretch it out too much. I wanted to make sure that the lace would open up. So it's kind of hard to see there, but there's lace on the arms. And then there's like a lace going down the, the front panel along with some cables. And uh, I would stand up and show you the back, but I think it would be better if I just post a picture. Um, so basically on the back, there's like a twisted um, cable or like a twisted, twisted stitch, knit stitch cable. And then there's like lace and more cables. It's essentially the same on the front as in the back, except down the middle on the back, there's that twisted stitch cable cross. Um, but yeah, I really, I really enjoyed knitting this and I kind of want to make another one, but not in baby alpaca. I mean, I'll stand up just to show you, like I made it, I, what I want, what I wish I had done is cropped it. So it did grow. Like, I think it was about here and it grew about two inches or so, but I, I think, yeah, I think the, the length is fine for like wearing it with jeans. Um, but like if I want to wear like a, a skirt or something or leggings it I don't know it doesn't look as good with those bottoms so if I was to knit this again I would not knit it in alpaca <laughs> and I would probably crop it about like four inches or so because I like I said I really enjoyed knitting this I love cables and I love lace and when you put them together that's like chef's kiss so yeah so that's what I'm wearing and Oh yeah, and the colorway is called Bordeaux, and yeah, I'm really happy with it. So that's what I'm wearing. And now let's get into finished objects. So my first finished object, I'm going to go in order of when I started the projects. Um, yeah, because I've been keeping track of the start date and the end date of everything. So the first thing I cast on this year was the... Hito Fude cardigan and that is by Hiroko Fukatsu and the yarn that I used is Loops and Threads uh, Lux Merino in the colorway black and so this is my second time knitting this pattern I enjoyed it okay it's kind of hard to see there is lace there <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed knitting it the first time um, the first time around and I really, I really wanted it in black. I think this would look really cute over top of uh, a couple of dresses that I own. So this is the back. Yeah, it's basically just this 
repeating lace all the way through. And then let's see if I can turn this around. Yeah. I'll try and get some pictures. I'm going to do my best to get pictures of everything this time. If anything, like if it's not on my body, then at least getting a picture of it on a hanger or a flat lay. But the cool thing about this pattern, and I think I've mentioned this before on a previous uh, video, is that if you had one piece of yarn that was long enough, you could technically knit this from start to finish and only have the two ends to weave in. Um, so with the yarn that I used, uh, I believe it had, oh, right, I'll show you. I've got the, got the ball band here. So it's, uh, yeah, Loops and Threads Lux Merino. That's that. And let's see how much does it say? So it's 55% superwash merino and 45% acrylic. And it is 300, sorry, 410 yards or 375 meters uh, per 150 grams. So I used, I think, two and a half balls of this to knit my cardigan. And yeah, I think it turned out, I, I basically, I looked at the, the first one that I made. I, I knit the same size as the first one I made and I counted out the repeats from uh, from this back ribbing. I, I, you can't see because it's black. <laughs> but um, I counted the a number of repeats down here and that's what I did on this one was the same amount of repeats. A part of me wanted to just keep knitting until I ran out of yarn but I think that it just this was like the perfect length so I just stopped where I was, cast it off, and the changes... I only made one change to this where it has you bind off on a wrong side row, but I didn't like the way that it looked, so I instead knit one more row to bind off on the right side, and I prefer I prefer the look of that. When it came to blocking, I was unsure how it would block because, because it's, what, 55% superwash merino and 45% acrylic, so I wasn't entirely sure if it was going to block as well as, like, 100% wool or merino or like superwash and because it is because it is superwash I kind of figured it would grow a little bit but not very much because of the acrylic in it and I think the other concern I had was the um the you can't, again you can't see it but the I guess the edging that's this edging here basically I was worried that it wasn't going to block out flat and that it would curl in and I think uh, when I put it on, it does curl a little bit inside, like it does curl inwards a little bit, but it doesn't look terrible. I think it, I think if I was to go back and block it, like steam block it, or I think there's a way to steam block acrylic to make it, uh, like you basically kill the acrylic in it and it, and it lays flatter, I guess. I don't know if I'm going to go back and do that because, like I said, I, I think it looks fine the way it is. And because it's black, it's hardly noticeable that it kind of curls in a little bit. So, yeah, I'm really, really happy with the, how this turned out. And I think, like I said, I used two and a half balls. So I was really impressed with the yarn uh, because there was no breaks, no knots or anything in the yarn. So I got three whole long strands from start to finish in each of the balls or at least in the first two balls and halfway through the second ball so I only had six ends to weave in which was super nice uh, the less ends I have to weave in the better so I was yeah so all in all I'm really happy with this project I was happy with the yarn I would buy it again but only if it was on sale because I believe this yarn is $11.99 or I think it's about $12 or so not on sale so it's 12 24 36 so like after tax it was about 40 dollars for this um cardigan for me and i yeah i don't i usually don't buy yarn from michael's unless it's on sale or unless i have a coupon or something so <laughs> try and save as much money as i can but uh this was actually from stash yarn that i bought last year so i yeah so i'm getting yarn out of my stash which is good okay so that's that one. The next finished object I have 
is the Ram Vest. And this is a pattern by Irene Lynn. So the yarn that I used for this is Patton's Classic Wool Worsted. And this was the first time I've worked with this yarn. I actually was inspired by Faith of, um, oh my gosh, I think she changed her channel name, but I'll link her down below. Um, but she's the Redhead Knits on Instagram. And she's talked about this yarn a number of times. And so I, it was on sale at Michael's last year. So I picked up, I picked up enough to make this vest and I liked it so much that I went back and bought more. So here's the vest. And the colorway for this is Erin. And this is the, this is the label here. Patton's Classic Wool Worsted. I don't know why it's not focusing, but anyways. So again, with the lace and the cables, we've got lace down the side and then cables down the middle. And then there's a, like the textured stitch on the sides. And then on the back, it's got the cables down the middle and more of the lace stitch. And then I the detail I really like, I just love when there's these uh, slip, either, uh, like these ones are slip stitches here. And then on some other Irene Lynn patterns that I've knit, it's she has twisted stitch columns, which I think looks really nice. But after knitting this ram vest, I actually think the slip stitch looks a lot cleaner. Uh, maybe it's just because this is a, a worsted weight yarn and it just kind of pops better. And the the other one of the things that drew me into this pattern is the split hem on the side. It's a really high split hem. So it's basically right under the arms. So this is basically knit, like it's knit flat, both the front and the back. And you, you knit them separately. And then when you go to do the, the armholes or the arm bands, I guess, uh, that's when you, like that's when you fold it or not fold it. That's when you layer it and you pick up the stitches along the side here. So I'm super pleased, like I'm so pleased with this. I did an Italian, no, not, not yeah, an Italian bind off, the sewn, or sewn bind off? I'm not sure if it's Italian sewn bind off, but anyways, like, it's just, I don't know, the edges look so clean. I'm obsessed with this bind off, and I did it on the bottom as well. It just looks so clean. I was so impressed with this yarn. Uh, for the price point, I think on regular price it's $7.99 a ball but when I got it it was on sale for like it was either 33% off or it was it was a buy two get one free which essentially is about 30 some odd percent um so I think it ended up being about five dollars a ball or something I'm not sure don't quote me on that my math my quick math might not be correct but uh it looks this vest looks so cute over a dress um, I actually got a, like a kind of an army green colored, um, I'm not sure what, what the style is, but it's kind of like an oh, oversized, like button down shirt dress kind of thing. And this looks super cute over top of it. Um, I'm trying to think what else was there. Oh, right. Uh, the modifications I made to it was I basically did two, I think I did like one or two extra repeats at the bottom. I just wanted it a little bit longer because I think initially it was a little bit too cropped for me. But yeah, it looks super nice. I love it. Oh, sorry. The lighting is like kind of changing here. I think I'm not sure. Oh, it's probably just being blown out by the color of this, by the vest. But yeah, so I'm super pleased with this. I really enjoyed knitting on it. I think I ended up finishing it within a week or so um probably less than a week considering one of my other projects I knit in four days so I'm pretty sure I probably knit this one in a couple of days as well because I just really enjoyed it I just I love textures lace and the cables just oh my gosh it just looks I don't know I just can't get over how like clean and polished this looks I just love it definitely recommend this pattern. The other thing about this pattern is uh, she has it styled two different ways where she's got the shorter version and then she's, uh, sorry, when I say she, I mean Irene Lynn, um, in some of the pictures she has it styled with it being very long. 
so it's more comes down to like thigh length I think is what was like I'm pretty sure that's the length that she has in the second version so essentially it's you knit the same thing you just knit it longer I initially was going to knit the longer version but I'm not sure if I could pull off that style so that's why I did the shorter version okay so the next finished object I have is a pair of socks and this is a pair of socks that I've wanted to knit for quite some time now and this is the Stardust socks and this is by Carly Perrins so these are the socks here this is technically my first actual color work socks um, the yarn that I used was from my stash I picked up from like Knit City a number of years well, I say a number a couple of years ago and it was basically I had one full skein of this yarn from all points north so I had a full skein of ballet pink in there I think the sweet sock sweet sock base and then I had a a little mini of the briquette colorway so the ballet pink is obviously the pink and the briquette is the like darker like almost charcoal black color so it's, oh sorry too close so yeah this pattern I believe there's two patterns that you can buy one is cuffed down and the other one is toe up I don't think they're in the same um, in the same document I'm pretty sure it was two separate um, patterns entirely but I chose the cuff down one because I've to be honest I've never knit toe up socks and maybe I would like it but I just maybe I'm just biased towards cuff down socks because they seem to be in my head an easier easier to do because then you can oh I guess if you do toe up you can try it on as you go too anyways so here's the color work and in the pattern um, there I think there's one extra there's one more row down here that I omitted because I didn't want to it was like a single black um, stitch in between these I think and I just didn't want to do that and there's also the option to do the color work on the toe as well which I omitted on this because I didn't have enough of the mini skein left to do an entire uh, the entirety of the toe on both socks so what I originally did for these was I cast on I cast on the size 2 which I think is 64 stitches that's my normal sock size I normally cast on 64 stitches for my socks so I figured that would be good and I I started with 2.25 millimeter and I did this all on magic loop this is like the first time I've done a sock fully on magic loop so I did 2.25 millimeters for the cuff and then I switched up to seven no oh my god not seven 2.75 for the color work and initially I when I finished the color work the first time I was like okay I'm gonna try it on and I tried on the sock and it was too tight I could not get it over my heel oh yeah I guess it was I did the color work and before I put the heel in I try I tried it on I tried to try it on and I could not get the color work over my heel so I was pretty disappointed that I had knit all that only for it to not fit so what I did was I went up a size to the 72 stitch sock and again I did 2.25 for the cuff and I did 2.75 for the color work and I tried really hard to be a little bit looser with the color work like I tried every time I you know had to catch a float I stretched it out and did a couple stitches and stretched it out and uh, again once I finished the color work I tried it on and it actually fit which was nice I was like okay I can go forward with this the problem is 72 stitches was too big for my is I know it's too big for my foot so what I ended up doing was I did the heel uh, I did the heel for the size 3 something like that anyways it's just a heel flap and gusset and what I did was when I when I was decreasing the gusset here I just kept decreasing until I got down to 64 stitches and I'm not sure if you can see here but like the the decreases there's a couple more that go down that way so the decreases are kind of on the bottom of my foot for a couple of rows which I don't mind it turned out it turned out well so um what did I do 
On the second sock, my color work tension was a lot better. It's actually slightly looser than the first sock, but after blocking, they they one fits slightly tighter than the other, but they both fit perfectly. I haven't worn them yet because I wanted to show them first. I'm actually really excited to like wear these with my boots to have like this part peeking out the color work. And yeah, so that's my Stardust socks. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to say. Um, Okay, let's move on to the next finished object. This one I'm super excited about. <laughs> so my next finished object is the Ramble Jumper. And this is again by Irene Lin. And the yarn that I used again was the Patton's Classic Wool Worsted. And the colors I used were black and natural mix. So this is my version of the sweater. And there's a number, there's quite a few differences, uh, well, there's, there's a few differences between uh, mine and the original pattern. So, oh, look at that. Oh yeah, I guess technically this is color work. So I did two color work things. Yeah, I've done two color work things this year. So this is, yeah, so the sleeves got this color work on it. And the sleeves are like, I think what I say, or what did I write down? I think there's a total of 10 stitches increased for the sleeve so it kind of opens up before the color work or like it gets bigger before the color work to kind of give like a what is that called like a bell sleeve or something no because it yeah anyways and on the neck so the differences between mine and the original pattern is that I wanted to have the black neckline in the original pattern it's just it's the same color as the body but I don't know, I just, I felt like to tie everything together, I needed to add the black to the neckline. And I really, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. The only thing is, like if I was to knit this again, I would not do the lifted increases. I think I must have done them wrong on one side. Because when I picked up for the neckline, uh, let's see, where is it? So the left side looks good. You can see like the neckline looks good on that side, but then the right side, you can see there's like a line all the way down. So either I picked up incorrectly on that side or I did those increases incorrectly. Um, so if I was to, if I was to do another sweater where it asks for a lifted increase, I would probably just opt for a make one left and make one right. And yeah, so it's got a twist, it's twisted rib. I don't know if you can tell because it's, it's black yarn. It's hard to see. The other modification I made was on the hem. So I believe the hem has a different, like it's, again, it's just the, the same color as the body. And I think there's like some kind of a stitch pattern on it or maybe it's just ribbed on I don't remember actually don't remember <laughs> but I decided to do the color work on the hem as well and I feel like it just ties everything together um so what I did was I had to increase the I had to increase towards the bottom before the color work so that I had enough stitches uh, for the repeats of the color work without having to like fudge anything. So I think it was like a total of four stitches I had to increase to get the right number for the repeats. But look how good that looks. Like it's so crisp. Again, this Pat Patton's Classic Wool Worsted just knits up so beautifully for a yarn that you get. Like it's a 100% wool and for a yarn that you can buy at Michael's or like I'm pretty sure in the States in at Joann's you probably could buy it there too. I feel like it's it's really good bang for your buck. Like I said, I only ever buy it on sale, so I feel like it's an even better deal. But yeah, I really, I just really, enjoy, I really enjoyed this knit. This was actually my fastest knit this year. I think I started on January 9th and I finished it on the 13th because I was so, I just wanted to get to the color work so badly that I, I just knit all day for like four days in a row. And I, the color work went by so fast. I, it was just, it's a really easy repeat 
to memorize and yeah once I got to it I just I plowed through I did the whole color work thing in one sitting and yeah um oh and it's got like a broken looks like a broken rib hem again probably can't see because it's black and I did a what did I do here I think I did oh so I think I did a regular bind off on the bottom uh, like on the hem and then on the sleeves I actually opted to do a three a three stitch I cord bind off if you can see that there I don't know I think I did a regular bind off initially and I didn't like I don't know I didn't like how it looked so I went back and did a did the i-cord bind off and I think it just kind of like finishes it finishes it off better the i-cord bind off might be what's in the pattern but uh yeah so that is my ramble jumper super pleased with it um yeah and just the stitch definition looks like it just looks so good look at that just amazing I'm, I'm just so happy I'm so happy with all my projects that I've knit so far this year um okay my next finished object is the oh, what's it called Peggy sweater and this is by Le Knit and this was kind of a labor of love so let me see let me show it to you first so this is an all-over textured sweater and it's got some baubles on there you can see so it's all it's just all texture all the way through it's got like these diamonds some squiggles and uh, bobbles and then that's this is the back and the yarn that I used is from Hobby this is their Highland wool so it's that it's gonna focus probably not and this is in color number four I'm not sure what the actual name of it is but um this pattern was a little bit tough to follow it's interesting because I I was reading some of the comments bef like before I got the pattern and there was a number of comments that said oh you know it's clearly written had no problems and yeah so I was like okay that's great I like clearly written patterns so who doesn't and so and I just, I don't know, I just really wanted an all over texture sweater. And so I bought the pattern and I took a look through it. And I was like, okay, it seems pretty straightforward. And then I got to knitting it and I feel like there's, it's charted. So it has you, uh, has like the bare bones instructions, <laughs> at least in my opinion, compared to other patterns that I've knit. Um, so it basically gives you instructions on how to get things set up and then it says to follow the charts. Following the charts was no problem. Well, it was the way the charts are set up is kind of like where for each size there's like A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and then there's like the middle column and then like your start point is for one section is on is on the side and you, you know, go back and forth and then round and round depending if you're knitting flat or in the round. And then there's like a column down the middle where your start point is when you get to the sleeves and so you start in the middle and you work around ah uh, it took me a little bit to wrap my mind around it but once I got once I figured it out once I got my mind wrapped around it it wasn't it wasn't as overwhelming as it was when I first looked at the pattern anyway so the let's see the body was not a problem uh, like once I uh, once I connected in the round it was simple following the charts round and round and round when I got to the sleeves uh, it just says to pick up a number of stitches around the sleeves but it doesn't give you the pickup rate and so initially I was like okay I have to pick up this many stitches and normally it's like three for every four or two for every three so I think I started with two for every three, but that was too many stitches all the way around. Uh, it was like, it was way too many stitches. So then I was like, okay, I'll do, so I did two for three. So I did, no, I think I started with three for four and then I went down to two for three. And then I tried to do uh, one for two was too few. So I had to do one for two and then two for three. So I picked up a stitch, skipped one, 
picked up two stitches, skipped one, picked up one stitch, skipped one, two stitches, etc. And I did that all the way around until I got to the end and then I had to pick up one for two for the last like four stitches. So I made sure to write that in my notes, like in, in my notebook so that I would remember for the second sleeve. That's what I did. And then again, like I said earlier, when it comes to the sleeve chart or this, yeah, particular chart for the sleeves, there's a column down the middle of the chart and that's where your start point is. And then there's like the first column is your first stitch of the sleeve. And then the repeat starts after that. And then there's decreases that include that, I don't know, the decreases were a little bit finicky at first because I definitely messed it, the, I messed up the first two decreases and then I was like, oh, I'm missing, I thought I was missing a stitch or I thought I had one stitch too many when it turned out I had the right number of stitches. So I had decreased one stitch extra. So I had to decrease two stitches instead of three stitches or one stitch instead, sorry, one stitch instead of two stitches. Anyways, it was just, I had, for the fact that I've knit a number of sweaters at this point in my knitting life, or like since I started knitting, this was the first sweater in a while that's given me, that has caused me to have to think a little bit harder <laughs> about how the pattern is set up and how to go about it. Anyway, so that's a long-winded story to say that the pattern itself turned out spectacular, if I do say so far, do say so myself. I think it's actually going to be one of my favorite sweaters because the texture just looks phenomenal. Like I, oh my gosh, just look at that. Um, but yeah, it was a little bit tough to get through the pattern, but once I got through the pattern, it, it really is pretty straightforward as long as you're going like step by step, I think maybe my mind was trying to get a little too ahead of itself. Um, one thing I noticed on this is when I'm knitting flat, my bobbles are pretty, you know, pretty perky. When I knit in the round, I noticed that like you can barely see my bobbles. So what I, you can see here, what I did here was basically, um, I went through with a like a darning needle and I just started pulling the stitches and like evening them out so that the bobbles so I could like perk the bobble up and then spread the e excess through the next three stitches um let's see if I can show you what I mean so I started so I started popping these ones out and I think maybe on the other sleeve I haven't done it yet so you can see like there's an elongated stitch right here and the bobbles right there. So what I would do is I would start pulling this stitch here and, and pulling it through all the way to the next bobble. And then I would pull it until the bobble pops out. And then I would go to the next stitch and pull that one across. And that's how I, that's how I am going to solve the bobble problem. So I blocked this and it blocked beautifully. Sorry, I feel like I'm like talking a mile a minute here. Um, let me catch my breath. Okay. So the yarn that I use, like I said, is from Hobby. It's 100% virgin wool. It's this, you know, the Highland wool. And when I initially knit the sweater, before I blocked it, the sleeves were about right here, like where, you know, bracelet length, but I knew it was gonna grow, so I didn't like I didn't want to do another repeat so I stopped after the like the bobble the squiggle and the bobble and then I did the cuffs and that was the perfect length because once I blocked it it blocked out like it just blocked out to the perfect length where it's like I think it's just below my wrist kind of thing so I'm super happy and not only that but initially the yarn the yarn itself is super bouncy. I think it's a worsted spun is what it is. And it was just super soft in my hands and very just, you know, when you tug on it, it, it bounces back very easily. So yeah, when I blocked it, it really relaxed, like it really relaxed into itself. And the drape is like, oh, it's just, it's awesome. 
Um, I initially wasn't too sure about this yarn, but I actually really enjoyed working with it. And I think I ordered eight balls of this and I used, I think I used just under eight. I probably could have gotten away with seven, possibly, but eight balls seems to be enough for this. I believe I knit the second size. No, I think I, I knit either the first or second size. Um, but yeah, so it's just look at that texture. I love this. I, I think I'm going to look, um, or I'm possibly in the future going to be knitting more textured garments. Um, and I am really enjoying the fingering weight. Like this is fingering weight. So I think I might opt for more fingering weight sweaters if I have the yarn because I'm trying really hard to knit from stash and not buy new yarn. Um, and that seems to be going pretty well so far this year. So, except for the next finish, the last finished object, I did have to buy yarn for this because initially the yarn I wanted to use didn't work out. So my last finished object is actually a test knit and this is a test knit for the Lauder V-neck cardigan. And this is by Rebecca Klo, uh, also known as the Crayavea on YouTube and Instagram. And this is an all over cable cardigan. It's, it's got just rows and rows of cables. And I really enjoyed testing this. And yeah, I just, yeah, it, it's a very, the test knit group, there's a lot of people because Rebecca's got, I think she's got the vest, the sweater, and the cardigan. And each one has a different neckline. So she's got the like the rounded neck vest, the V-neck vest, and then the rounded neck sweater, V-neck sweater, the rounded cardigan, and the V-neck cardigan. So I signed up for the V-neck cardigan and I was super excited to be chosen for this one. Um, yeah, so this is it. And I knit, or I, test, uh, I tested the size two and there was, there were a couple spots where I had to put it down and wait for further clarifications on things, but Rebecca was pretty good at getting back to us on like clarifying certain, certain areas. Anyway, so this is it. And I, so I sewed a little tag in there. I did not do a very good job. It's kind of puckering, but this is a a tag it's like faux suede or some faux yeah faux suede or something and I got this from a shop that I or yeah I found it on Instagram and I believe it's called grain deep and I they have a website and they also have an Instagram which I will link down below if you're interested I bought the sample pack which comes with like different sizes and different colors of tags that you can sew in so I, I thought it would just complete the whole cardigan. And this was technically the first, I think I'm pretty sure this is the first garment that I've ever sewn buttons on. So I got these kind of like, what are these, like a shell? No, I don't think they're shell, but these buttons, and I've got four of them. One, two, three. And then I, I put the one that was stripey at the bottom. Unfortunately, when I went to buy the buttons, they only had the four buttons and so I really liked them but I just didn't like that last button so I put it on the bottom so it's hopefully less noticeable that it's stripey compared to the rest of them. So this blocked out perfectly. Initially like before blocking it had a little bit of extra like excess here in the like the front part um, but once I once I soaked it and blocked it, when it dried and I tried it on again, that excess really like relaxed out. So it fits really well now. And like, just look at those cables. This looks so, <laughs> I mean, not to toot my own horn, but like it looks so well made. Um, cable arrangement, I just really enjoyed doing and I enjoy looking at it. Like, look at that. It's, it's just so nice. It's, it's not like, overly complicated 
it's just you know all over cables and yeah like, look at that it just ah oh, I'm in love with it I I've actually worn this a cup like a number of times since I finished it um one thing I will say about the pattern itself is that it was very overwhelming at first when we got the document because I was on my phone I opened the document on my phone and I was I was knitting from my phone um I'm not sure it like the page numbers didn't show up so I was constantly having to scroll to find my section whenever because my phone didn't remember the section that I was on so every time I opened it it would start at the top of the document and so I would have to scroll down to find my spot so there was like two or three times where I started working I, I like I started knitting and then I realized wait a second this doesn't line up with what I was doing before not that like the cables didn't line up but it's like the sh the construction didn't line up it's like oh I'm doing uh oh I got the instructions for the round neck instead of the v-neck so I had to like I think there was one point where I had to go back a couple of rows which was no big deal and do my decreases for my for the v-neck so just that was one thing that was on me for not paying it not paying attention to exactly what page I was on so it's yeah but it was it was definitely I mean I got it done in the end so I was really happy with it um but yeah so that's my my last finished object and uh oh yeah so this pattern is the test knit due date is March 20th so I believe Rebecca is going to be releasing the pattern shortly after that so do look for the pattern towards the end of March at the end of this month um yeah and if you're not already following Rebecca I'll link her down below as well she's the Crea Bea on YouTube and on Instagram Okay, so that is all of my finished objects for like so far for this year. Those were all projects that I started and finished this year. And yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be better at not having too many projects on the needles at one time. So my max is, is five, but I'm aiming for four or less at a time. Um, yeah, so let's get into works in progress. So I have three works in progress and technically two of them have a half finished object in them. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, this is the, so this will be the Stardust socks again. And this is by Carly Perrins. And the half finished object I'll show first is this one. So this, the difference between this one and the first one I showed earlier is that I did the color work on the toe as well as on the cuff. So you see that. The yarn that I used is, I believe this is Midnight Cravings in the light sock base and the colorway was rose water. And this was left over from a sweater that I knit last year. And then this darker color here that has also got Stellina in it is a mystery skein that I had in my stash that didn't have a label. So I'm not entirely sure who it, who dyed it or where it was from I don't even remember which yarn store I bought it from but so with this pattern I did the same thing where I started with the size 3 with the 72 stitches on size 2.25 millimeter and then I did I went to 2.75 for the um, leg and then what I did here was after the so I op opted out of the last two rows of color work and because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough of this, the pink, so I, I didn't uh, go any further. Um, what did I do? Oh yeah, I decreased. So I decreased from 72 stitches down to 64 before I did the heel flap and gusset. And then I went to 2.25 for the heel flap and the gusset decreases. And then once I got to the color work again, I went back up to 2.75. For the toe and I don't I don't know it see it looks a little it looks kind of messy to be honest like this this whole part here just doesn't look very doesn't look very clean but I'm not too fussed about it so that's the one finished sock of the pair and then I've got oh I see 
I only just started, so I, I just did the cuff. Whoops, got yarn everywhere. So I've just got the cuff done. Uh, it looks like I've, I've swapped up to my 2.75 millimeter needles. This is um, Addy, I believe this is the Addy Turbo um, fixed cord or fixed needles. And I started on my Chiaogu fixed needles. And this is the, um, these are supposed to be like ergonomic needles. So they kind of have a, a bend in them. Initially, I didn't realize I bought the ones with the bend in them and I initially did not like them. So I, I've had these for a number of years and I just recently picked them up because I wanted to do magic loops. So I gave them a try again. And actually they're not, it's not so bad to hold in my hands. So I'm not, uh, I'm not upset about having the bend in the needle. So yeah, they worked out fine. Magic loop. So yeah, so again, I'm not, I'm not very far. I just finished the cuff. So hopefully I'll have the sock finished for next time. Oh, I'm gonna put my, my sock back in there. But I just, I really like the, the color work on both the toe and the leg. So yeah, again, this was yarn from Stash. I'm trying to use up. I have, I think that's how much I have left of the rose water. So I've been going through and finding, like, I think, I think this bin over here has some leftover sock yarn that might be enough for if I used contrast colors for heel, toes, and cuffs, I should have enough yarn to make matching like another set of socks. So I've been trying really hard and so far have been successful at using stash yarn this year. Now uh, the next uh, work in progress, work in progress that has a half finished um, object is just a regular pair of socks or like no pattern for this. Um, I basically did contrasting heel, toes, and cuffs. I did my normal heel flap and gusset. And what I did was, uh, so I used 2.25 millimeter needles, which is like, again, my go-to for just regular socks. I did a two by two ribbing, and then I did a six by two uh, broken rib. I don't know, I just, I felt like I wanted something, I didn't want to do the whole sock and ribbing, and I really like broken rib, like it just, I don't know, help. I feel like because it's variegated yarn, I thought maybe the broken rib would kind of, you know, help break things up and give it a little bit of, I don't know, some interest, I guess. So I knit the foot or sorry, I hit the leg, did the heel flap and gusset, just the standard slip stitch heel flap and the gusset. And then I did a contrast toe. And so, oh, one sec. Okay, sorry for the interruption. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Okay, so I have I have the one sock done and this is, this is blocked. Um, oh yeah, the previous sock I showed is also blocked. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it, you know, turned out well. It also hopefully inspires me to get the second sock done. So I cast on the second sock a couple days ago and I'm just working on the leg. I've done yeah, the cuff and part of the leg. And the thing about these socks is that I recently bought the Chiaogu Shorties set and then I bought a 37 inch cord to go along with it. And I'm using the three inch the three inch tips. So the, the Chiaogu shorties come with, I think the two inch and the three inch tips. And it initially comes with three of the shorter cords so that you can make a, what is it? I think a nine inch circular, what is it? An eight inch, nine inch and a 12 inch or something like that. But uh, one thing I'll say about these needles is that the day I bought them, I went home and I cast on for socks. And initially knitting with this short of a needle, cause I normally knit with four, four inch needles, sometimes five inch needles, depending on which, um, which needle set I'm using. But using the three inches was a little bit, was actually pretty hard on my hands cause I couldn't figure out how to maneuver my hands around them so that I wasn't um, stressing the cord at the join here. Cause I have seen a number of times 
not like super often, but I have seen people that have had their Chiagu um, cords break at the at the join where the cord meets the metal. So I tried really hard not to like put too much pressure on that to bend it. And initially I thought I was going to return the needles or exchange them for the four inch tips or the five inch tips. But after some time, I think it took a couple of days of on and off knitting. Um, I, over time I did get co more comfortable with how to hold them. It was basically the same thing that happened with my Addy Flexi Flips where I didn't know how to hold them and it was hurting my hands. And after like four or five times of picking it up and putting it down, my hands finally figured out how to maneuver <laughs> with the with the needles. And so I decided I would keep the needles because I want to be able to use them to like knit sleeves and do socks. And yeah, I think the needle set comes with 2.25 or maybe it's two two millimeter up to up to 3.25 or something like that. I'm not sure. Something like that. But anyways. So that's my, my second work in progress that has a half finished object. And the last work in progress that I have is the Afra sweater and this is by Irene Lynn. And I am knitting this out of Mountain Metal Wool and this is the Sar their Saratoga base. And the colorway is rose so this is what the ball band looks like. Of course it's never going to focus so I can never figure that out and I just connected in the round last night I cast this on yesterday and I just connected in the round so it's kind of I don't know it's kind of hard to see but it's got a little bit of a v-neck here happening and I just started on the like the the lace and twisted stitches on the sleeve very little of it done right there but uh, the sweater so okay so this yarn I got from Faith. <laughs> she and I both have a, had a birthday in February and we decided to do a gift exchange. So I sent her a gift and she sent me a gift and this was part of that gift that she sent to me. Um, and this yarn, okay wait, hold on. This yarn, let me grab this one, is, I want to say is this worsted spun, but it is so bouncy and I don't I don't know what it is but I love working with this yarn it just feels so good in my hands I think it's let's see it says it is mountain merino wool made in buffalo wyoming yeah that's all it says on there so I'm assuming it's 100% merino wool but it just I don't know it just has so much bounce to it and I'm so I'm excited to get the sweater going because Faith also knit the sweater so we're gonna be kind of like twins except mine is pink and hers I believe was green so I, I really want to get going on this I want to get to the I want to split for sleeves and then get the sleeves done and knit the rest of the body because I'm not I think I'm gonna do the sleeves first because I want the full the full effect of the sleeves full length and I'm not sure yet if I want to crop the body yet because I think this would look really cute over. I have a black dress that I think this would look really cute over if I made it cropped. So we'll see. But yeah, and I think like the, it's kind of, okay, so I could have gone down a needle size, but my gauge, um, I didn't want to go too far down because my, even though my gauge is like off by one stitch, um, my row gauge was four stitches off and I, if I went down another needle size my row gauge would probably be off by even more so I figured I'd rather have the positive ease of the stitch count than to miss out on like an, an extra inch or two of the row count if that makes sense so I do still like the the fabric that this is giving it's kind of like it just feels so lightweight like this is just this almost feels like nothing <laughs> I think what is this so it's 250 yards for two ounces so it's just it's super lightweight and I like it I, I like it a lot and the color oh, I'm so excited it, it's way it's a little bit it's a little bit more toned down than it is on the camera the camera almost makes it look like a well, it is kind of bubblegum pink 
but it is not as bright as it is on camera. The camera is really making it blow out a little bit. So yeah, and this is living in my project bag that I got from, uh, what's the name on here? Atelier Nikozuki. What's the tag there? If you can read it, I'm not sure. But again, I'll try to remember to link this shop down below. I got this uh, project bag at Knit City last year. Oh, she has, she had so many project bags that I wanted to get, but this was the one I settled on because it's got cats on it. I love it. Anyways, yes. Okay. So that is, that is everything. Um, that was a longer episode than I anticipated. Hopefully the, the next video will be a little bit shorter because I had two months to catch up on here, uh, for this video. Um, I was going to talk about my future knits, but I think I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching and yeah, until next time, happy knitting.